<laughs> okay, cool. So thank you for joining us, everyone, to the second session of um, learning how to use version control. Uh, this workshop series is offered by the AI for Multiple Long-Term Conditions Research Support Facility. Always so impressed with myself when I say that without stopping. Um, so this uh, week we'll be diving into uh, working with GitHub. So just to remind you a little bit uh, what we did last week. So you learned what version control is. So version control is an approach to recording changes in files over time so that you can track their history, review the changes that were made in them and go back to earlier versions uh, if needed. You also learned that Git is a version control system. It is arguably the most popular version control system, but it is just one of many. So, you know, there are other version control systems. Um, you can use Git locally in your computer through the command line, uh, through specialized GUIs like um, GitHub Desktop and GUIs are graphical user interfaces. You can also use them through plugins for IDEs, so um, our Studio if you're an R user or Visual Studio Code if you use basically anything else. Uh, you can also use Git Online uh, and that is what we will be talking about today. Um, and you also learned how to start tracking files by, you know, initiating the repositories and putting files in the staging area. Um, you also learned how to save any edits that you had made by making commits um, and reverting to earlier versions with um, amend, undo, and revert, if I remember correctly. Um, so before we dive into new stuff, I did want to ask if anyone had any questions um, from last time that we can, you know, solve before we dive into other things. Uh, Rachel is here today, so she can um, answer any questions for the things that she talked about then. So I will now stop. And yeah, you can raise your hand, you can just unmute and ask any questions, uh, you can write them in Hack and D wherever you like. And if you don't have any questions, or if they come up uh, later on, you can still put them in the Hack and D and we'll pick them up later. I just wanted to make sure that we don't start today with anything still unclear from last time. I think I may have waffled for enough time that people would have written something if there were any questions, so I will move on, but you know what to do if you do have any questions. Okay, so what are we going to do today? So by the end of the session, uh, hopefully, you'll be able to explain what GitHub is and why it is useful. Uh, we'll see how you can connect your local repository, like the one we created last week, with a GitHub repository. You will understand what branches are and when to use them. You kind of heard about branches last week a bit, but we'll delve a lot more into them this time. Uh, we'll learn how to create and how to merge branches, and we'll also see how we can open and merge uh, pull requests, which you've not heard as a term before potentially, um, but uh, I'll also tell you what they are. Okay, uh, I do want to acknowledge that a lot of the material that I'll be showing you today has been um, taken from the code refinery lesson on introduction to version control with Git. Um, their materials are great. They're shared under a uh, Creative Commons attribution license, so check them out. They are linked uh, from the slides, which will be made available. So today uh, we will be talking about working on GitHub. So before we do that, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my Git and GitHub journey. So um, a lot of you probably already know a lot about this, but um, I did a BA in English language and literature. Surprise, surprise, I had no idea what version control Git or even programming was at that point. And that didn't really change when I did my master's. Um, I mean, I learned a little bit about statistics, but that was on SPSS. So again, no version control to speak of. But kind of changed when I started my uh, PhD in psycholinguistics. Um, that's when I really got into, uh, you know, programming with R, and I started using um, Git, mostly Git to be honest, uh, quite a lot from the R Studio IDE. 
So quite similar to GitHub Desktop, to be honest. And I used it almost exclusively like on a local repository uh, to version control my own files. Um, I did not collaborate with people very much uh, in my PhD. Um, so I knew some stuff about GitHub, but not a huge amount. Um, that started to change uh, when I took my first job out of my PhD, working as a trainer on research data management and open science. And then I started teaching people how to do version control, which was fun. Um, and it was a much more collaborative uh, space uh, where, you know, I worked with other people to develop materials. So that's kind of like a funny thing with my journey with this, with this stuff. When I used Git to do version control for code, um, I mostly worked by myself. And ever since when I've started using Git and GitHub more collaboratively, it has mostly been on other kinds of resources, mostly text, not really code. So that is like a, a peculiarity of how I use uh, these tools. Um, and that is still the case in my current position. Um, something that I have learned for the first time in this position is using GitHub for project management, um, which is quite fun, but was definitely a bit of a, a transition in uh, what I thought you can do with these tools in the first place. So why are we talking about GitHub? So last week, uh, Rachel showed you this uh, intentionally overwhelming and horrible slide to look at, um, where we have a, a project that's not even really that complicated, but you start with one person making some changes in a file, uh, and then other people want to get involved and help in different ways um, with different parts of that project. So basically what we've talked about so far really only covers this part of this mess. Um, so with Git, we can now um, make more, I don't know, like robust, uh, like keep more robust control of like the versions that we have created over here. But we've not really talked about how this would allow anyone else to collaborate with us, right? This is all still within our own computer. We've also not really tackled how we would create whole new features um, in those files. So these are the things that we'll be talking about in the next two sessions today and next week. So GitHub, um, so Git is super useful for working locally on your own computer, but it does fall short if you want to collaborate on a project with other people, or even if you want to work on your own from two devices, right? So if you have your work computer and your personal computer and you want to make a change, um, you still can't, right? Like you can only do that from one place. So that's when um, GitHub comes in. So GitHub is a popular website for hosting and sharing online projects that you have been tracking with Git. Um, so because this is a website, it's online, it's accessible to a lot more people, it allows collaboration. Um, and I'm just really fond of um, their logo, which is an ultra cat, because it is a hybrid between an octopus and a cat. And I just think that's funny. So there you go, octo cat. Um, okay, so what are the benefits of, Oct uh, of uh, GitHub? So, you know, I've been talking about collaboration a lot. It's obviously much easier to collaborate with other people when everyone has access to the same repository um, and they can just like all access the same version of files and make edits to them. Um, it also has very robust annotation of contributions. Um, so it keeps track of who made changes to what. So if something goes wrong, you can go and, you know, see when that error was introduced and, you know, talk to the person that introduced that error and try to resolve it. Uh, it gives you advanced permission options uh, in terms of you, know, you deciding who can see, who can edit, and who can manage uh, your repositories. And we'll talk a little bit more about that today and a lot more about that next week. Um, it also gives you quite a lot of functionality to record issues and bugs. So you know, if there's something that objectively is not working very well in the code, if the behavior you're seeing is unexpected, you can go and report that. You can also create issues to talk about potential things that could be added, but there are not like problems per se, just like the additional functionality. Um, and you can also use um, spaces to have discussions with a community that uses that repository um, and, you know, guide your development of that work uh, based on that. 
as I mentioned, there's also functionality for project management. So if you're into, you know, Kanban boards and agile and stuff like that, it is fairly well supported um, at this point, and it keeps getting better as well. And there is also functionality to do continuous integration and continuous development. Now, I do want to point out that we will not actually talk about these things at all. Um, I do want to have a session on project management uh, in the fall, but you know, I will communicate when the time comes um, about that. Um, I also wanted to point out that even though the reason you would use GitHub most of the time is because you want to collaborate with other people. Um, for today's session, you will still just be collaborating with yourself. Um, the reason for that is because it just gets more complicated when more people are involved. Um, and I want you to have more chances to practice with using Git uh, locally and using GitHub before we throw more people into the mix um, and make things a bit messier. So, you know, these are still the very valid reasons why you would use GitHub and a lot of them have to do with collaboration for this session, just to keep things a little bit simpler, you'll still be working with yourself. Okay, so I will now switch to GitHub desktop um, and I would ask that you do the same uh, and follow along with me. Um, so, at the moment, I have opened this uh, sandwich survey that we created um, last time. So I assume that this is uh, what you will be seeing as well. Uh, if you do use uh, GitHub Desktop for other things and you know a different repository is open, um, you can click on this tab that says current repository uh, and navigate to the sandwich survey and just click on that and open it. So just to give you a little bit of a reminder of what everything is. Um, so there are three tabs. Okay, the full screen is being a little bit annoying. So I will just do this. Um, so there are three tabs. Um, the first one, as I mentioned, is the you know tab telling you which repository you're on. If you're quite new to this, you'll probably only have this one repository. Um, the next tab uh, tells you which branch you are on. We didn't talk about branches very much. Uh, you just know that you are on main, and we'll get to this more today. Um, we spent most of our time looking uh, at this part last time, where um, on this tab you see any changes that exist in your files. Um, I don't have any unsaved changes, so nothing is appearing here. And in history, you can see um, you know, all of the commits that I made um, last time. Uh, and I can navigate through these and see what changes uh, I made. Over here is where you write your commit messages. If you make any save, any edits that you want to save, you add an additional description and you uh, commit um, those changes to the main branch. Okay, so this is just a bit of a reminder of where everything is and what everything is. Um, and what I'm going to do now is what uh, Rachel resisted um, last uh, week, which Git, uh, GitHub Desktop really wants you to publish your repository to GitHub. Um, we didn't do that last time. We kept everything local. This time, we're actually going to do it. We're going to publish. So I'm just going to click on this button here that says Publish Repository. And this will open up uh, this wizard. And it will ask you what you want to name your um, repository. I will leave it to sandwich survey. Um, it asks you for an optional description. I will just write um, that this is um, a test repository or um, a silly repository for teaching version control. Um, you'll see that this has uh, a ticked uh, book saying to keep this code private. I will actually make you make your code public. So untick this box uh, to make this public. Uh, and it also asks us about what organization we want this to be associated with. Um, we'll, we'll talk about organizations next week. For now, just leave this to none. And then click on Publish Repository. So this is what you want to have here name, uh, a short description, which is optional. You want the code to be public uh, and the organization to be none. 
and okay so now that it's published i can go to github uh and i can see whether this uh now appears so this is what i see when i open up um github i will give you a moment to also navigate to your browser um type you know github.com uh log in if you're not already logged in and this will look very different for you because um, these are just like the people that I'm following on GitHub. All of these things will be different because we have different repositories. But what I want you to do is to go over to the top right uh, where your avatar appears um, and go to a list of all of your repositories. Okay, so again, you go over here to your avatar and then you click on your repositories and uh, hopefully what you will see here is that the most uh, recent um, repository that I have is this sandwich survey repository so I'm going to click on it and I can see that um, you know this is this is the repository uh, it has now been put on a website, it is online, everyone can see it. Um, so there's quite a lot of stuff going on here. So I will give you a little bit of like a tour of what everything is. So over here, uh, you'll see your um, username and then um, the name of the repository. There are many, many tabs here. Um, I'm mostly gonna focus on this code tab. So just make sure you're over here um, and we'll talk about some of these things later. Um, you can see that you're on the branch uh, called main um, and over here you see basically all of the files that are included in the um, repository. Um, so you can see that these are all links. So if you click on uh, the instructions, for example, you will see the instructions. Uh, but there's also this other thing here, which is also a link, um, and that is um, the latest commit associated with this file. So if you click on this here, um, you will see the changes that were made um, in that latest commit. Uh, and you can see when these were made. Um, over here, you see the latest commit associated with the repository in general, um, and you can browse the history from over here. So these would be exactly the same uh, as the history that you see on GitHub desktop. Okay, And I clicked back on code to go back to this uh, menu. Uh, over here on the right, uh, you can see a kind of like summary of information about um, this repository. So you'll see that that optional description I gave um, is included over here. And you'll see that it recognizes that we have a README. Um, so also, if I scroll down here, I can see that the README is actually displayed. So this is a nifty thing that GitHub does. Um, if you name a file readme.md.txt, you know, whatever extension, but you need to spell it like this, like one word in all caps. And when it recognizes that, it lists it here and it displays it here. So it's really nice. It's like a landing page for your project so that people can go and like see um, what this project is about. Um, okay, so now we have two copies, uh, two versions of our repository. And at the moment, they're all synced up, which is great, right? Whatever I have in my GitHub desktop is the same thing as I have on um, this repository. We call this um, a remote repository. So it's like, you know, the online version of the repository, basically, that other people can contribute to. Okay, but what happens if I actually make changes now, right? So how do we keep these things synced up? So let's try that now. Um, I am going to add a new file into this um, GitHub repository. So we have all of these things about our super sandwich survey, uh, and I decided that uh, participating in this was going to make people very hungry and they would want to have their own sandwiches. So I want to give them um, recipes for the sandwiches that are uh, mentioned in the survey. So uh, if you go to um, the HackMD, uh, and I'll just, I'll just put it in the chat again. 
in case people don't have it. Um, you'll see that there is this like uh, nifty thing over here. Um, I have like this spoiler uh, so that it hides it normally. But if you click on this, it displays what is within it. So I just had it uh, like this so I can easily copy things um, and paste them. So doo -doo -doo. if you can't do this, let me know and I will also paste it in the chat. It's just I think the formatting will get a little bit messed up if we do that. Okay, so I have now copied the text that I want, uh, and I want to add this as a new file into this repository. So I'm going to do it by um, going to this button that says add file. Okay, and it has like this little drop down thing. So I'm just going to click on it. And it gives me different options, whether I want to create a new file or to upload a file. So I'm just going to create a new file. Uh, and I'm going to name my file sandwich recipes.md. So I've given it a markdown extension. Um, okay. So this is um, the uh, text that I wanted. So it's, you know, it, it's pretty silly, like it doesn't hugely matter, but it is a recipe for a BLT. I've mentioned the source of where I stole this recipe um, and the ingredients and the methods. Okay, so this is the change that I want to make. Uh, I am very happy with this. I can also preview it to see if the formatting works nicely, which it does, so that's nice. So this is some markdown formatting that I've done to have like titles and links and so on and so forth. So you can, um, yeah, there's the edit and the preview so you can see uh, if things look nice before you decide to make your commit. So I think that looks nice. So I'm going to commit my change um, and it opens up a wizard that's quite similar to um, what we have on GitHub desktop with the commit message and the extended description. Um, this is a good enough uh, commit message um, and I don't really need a description for this. So I'm just gonna leave it blank. You can see that it um, tells me which uh, email is going to be associated with this um, with this commit. Um, this is why I um, suggested uh, that if you didn't already have a GitHub account that you made one with your uh, academic one because people can see your email uh, or the email that is associated with your commits if they look hard enough. So if you don't want your personal email associated with these things, I would suggest using your academic or your work one. And um, from now on, I'm going to ignore this. I'm going to commit directly to the main branch. And I'm going to commit my changes. So that's lovely. I now have this new uh, file uh, with these recipes in my GitHub repository. But obviously, uh, this does not yet exist in GitHub Desktop, right? Because um I haven't um I haven't edited locally it's just it's just online uh as you can see there are no changes shown here uh github desktop does not know that anything has changed so this is where this tab uh comes in so this tab is the one that lets you interact with um the remote repository. So this is your local repository, the one that lives on your computer. The remote repository is the one that lives online. Um, and you'll see here it says fetch origin. Origin is the default name that um, remotes get. It, it's, it's nothing special. It could be something else. It's just the default name for this remote online repository. So if I click on this now, um, you'll see that it still says there are no local changes, um, but it found that the current branch does have a commit on GitHub that does not exist on my machine. So what I did just then by clicking on this, uh, when I fetched, um, Git looked for um, changes on my online repository and downloaded them um, locally. However, those changes have not yet been incorporated uh, into my, um, my machine. So if I click here in show and finder, um, you'll see that 
the recipes um, the recipes file uh, is not yet here. Okay, so to actually import these changes onto my local machine, I have to click on this button that says pool origin. So if I do that now, uh, and I go back to finder, I see that my sandwich recipes uh, are now there and that's going to open our studio, which is annoying. Uh, please go away. Don't save. Go, please go away. Ah, oh, yes, fine. <laughs> um, I need to update my R Studio, but I haven't. Uh, okay, so let's open it in this, uh, and you can see that um, indeed this is um, the the recipe um, file that we had before. Okay, oops, let's go away. This is why I didn't want to open it in our studio because now my art history has changed. Anyway, ignore that. Um, so does that make sense? So what I did was I created a new file uh, over on my remote. Um, GitHub desktop didn't know uh, that that had happened. So I fetched, it found that change. Um, and then I um, pulled to, yeah. I pulled to um, import those changes into the um, into my local repository. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought there trying to do that at the same time. So hopefully you didn't have to do any of that, uh, but this does kind of um, take me kind of neatly to what I was going to do later, which was make a change uh, onto my local repository and then um, try to import that change onto the remote. So it's okay. Uh, we're going to make another change uh, other than updating my git, my git ignore. Um, and that is, uh, I'm going to open, go away. Yes. Uh, I'm going to open this um, and edit my readme so that I can tell people that um, there is now a new file there so that they know what that file is about. Um, a recipe file containing recipes for the example sandwiches. Okay, so that is good. Uh, I have now edited my README. I'm going to close it. And we can see that uh, GitHub Desktop um, detects that I have made a change. Um, so it shows me what the differences are. And yes, I am happy with that. Um, add um, recipe. Add sandwich. I'm really failing at typing today. Add sandwich recipes. Dot md in readme. Um, so this is just a commit message uh, explaining what it is that I have done, and I will now commit uh, this change. And uh, GitHub Desktop tells me that I have two local commits that do not yet exist uh, on GitHub. So the way to um, you know, import those changes from my local repository to my repos remote repository is by clicking over here, uh, the button that says push origin. So that's great. Um, you'll see that this um, doesn't automatically change. I have to refresh uh, the page. Uh, and when I do, then um, we can see that this change has actually been made. Um, and I can see that change in my readme. <laughs> Rachel says, GitHub desktop is so happy when you push to origin. This is true. GitHub desktop is happy every time you're like doing things with GitHub. Okay. Um, so I would 
like to take a little bit of a break and see if there are, if anything is unclear was everyone able to to do those things did you get any issues with permissions because sometimes that does happen or was all of that smooth can i get like those reactions of yes and no uh if you were able to to do these things i can see some thumbs up which is great Yeah, we don't have any questions in, in the various places, and I don't see any no's. Excellent. Okay, so I think that that is kind of what I wanted to say about working with remotes um, on GitHub desktop. So I'll just go back to my slides. Um, and I do want to talk a little bit about how to keep things uh, private when you're working with Git and GitHub. So You've already seen me play around with this git ignore file. So we talked about this a little bit last week, um, but git ignore is a hidden file that keeps git from tracking files altogether, right? So when you um, open up this git ignore file, um, you just type in you know, the name of uh, a file that you want Git to not pay attention to at all or entire folders sometimes, um, and then, you just don't have version control for those files. Um, that is useful to have for uh, files that you really, really, really don't want to accidentally make public, for example, personal data, uh, or um, files that just don't make sense um, to be version controlled, um, like, you know, this R history that I keep, uh, that kept giving me trouble, um, is another hidden file on my computer that R creates uh, when I make any kind of change in a project in R. Um, I don't really want to keep track of that. That's not a useful thing for me. Um, so yeah, you can put things in a git ignore file for two reasons, either because they're very private and you really don't want to mess that up or because it just doesn't make sense to keep track of their versions. Um, so Git Ignore is a way of keeping things private, but it also does other things. So keep that in mind that it's not only there for that reason. Um, the other option that GitHub gives you to uh, keep things private when you're working with it is private repositories. Um, so you saw that when I um, told GitHub Desktop that I wanted to publish my repository onto GitHub, by default, it said that it was going to be a private repository. So private repositories um, basically allow you to keep code invisible to other people. So with private repositories, um, if someone went to my you know, list of repositories on my profile, um, you would be able to see a bunch of repositories that are public, but you won't be able to see repositories that are private um, unless I give you uh, permission to do that. It's often a temporary stage before publishing a project eventually. It's not always, but often that is how it is used. Um, and I wanted to note that even in a public repository, even though everyone can see it, that doesn't mean that everyone can go and like make changes to it. As I mentioned um, at the beginning, when I was talking about GitHub, it does give you quite a robust um, mechanism to control who can do what things in your repository. And it is actually really um, detailed. You know, can people just see it? Can people uh, make write edits? You know, like actually change files? Can they create repositories? Do they have like a more admin kind of control over it you know can they delete things for example so you do have quite um fine-grained control over who can do what with your uh, own repository so that's just something to keep in mind um i also wanted to clarify a little bit um some stuff about that fetch and pull uh command that you saw when i first wanted to import changes from my remote into my local repository so let's pretend that this is kind of like your environment right so um this is your laptop and this is uh github and you have um your working directory on your computer and within your working directory you have this 
hidden uh, dot .git folder, which uh, Rachel showed you last week. And if you go in there, you can see all of like the Git changes. Um, so that is where all of that stuff is tracked. And you also have your um, remote repository that lives on GitHub. And by default, its name is origin. Okay, so we talk, we said that um, if you want to take some changes out of your working directory and put them in that Git folder so that Git knows that you've made a change, you do that um, by making a commit. And this is, all of this is much simplification. Even this is much simplified because I've not talked about like the staging area, right? I'm just going straight from, you know, the working directory into Git and I'm not talking about that bit. So this is how you take changes from your working directory and put them into the Git folder. Today, we also saw how you take changes from your Git folder and you push them onto your uh, origin, onto your remote repository, right? So the changes that your local repository knew about are now um, on the cloud. Great. Um, you can also do uh, a pull, which takes the changes uh, from your origin, from your remote repository, and put them directly into your working directory. So these are the files that you are actually working on. Um, the equivalent of push that takes the changes from the GitHub repository and puts them into your Git folder, but does not affect the actual files that you're working on, that's a fetch, okay? So I think that, you know, push and pull should be the opposite equivalent actions, but they're actually not. Um, push uh, and fetch are equivalent and uh, pull takes them from origin and puts them in the working directory. Um, now, if you have just fetched uh, and your changes are only in your Git repository, but not in your working directory, normally you would have um, to do a merge. So you take the changes from here and you put them into here. Um, this is the terminology that, you know, if you go to the Git documentation, this is what they will say. First you fetch and then you do a merge such that pull as a command or an action is a fetch and then a merge. Um, now GitHub desktop fudges that up a little bit um, such that first it says that it's going to fetch and it downloads the changes you've made to your remote and puts them into your Git, your Git uh, folder. And then when you want to take those changes from your Git folder and put, put them into your working directory, it says, do you want to pull them into your working directory? Now, I assume it means merge, but maybe it actually does just download them again from origin. I'm honestly not sure. I have not been able to find that answer on Google. Um, and the reason I am pointing this out is because if you work on the command line, which I feel like a lot of you will be, um, you will most of the times just do a git pull from the command line and won't do a git fetch uh, first, especially if you're only working with yourself. Um, so I'm just pointing out that there is a little bit of discrepancy with the terminology there. Um, so do keep that in mind. Um, and I will take yet another break to see if there are any questions. It seems like there are not. Um, so I was thinking that we would take um, like a five minute break uh, at this point. I know it's a little bit, Ooh, question. I'm a little bit confused. Would you mind explaining what is the difference between Git and working directories? Yes. So, um, so the working directory, uh, ooh, Rachel, do you remember how to make these hidden things visible on Mac. Oh, um, is it command shift period? Yes. Hey. <laughs> Nicely done. Okay. So this is basically the working directory. These are the files that you're actually making changes to when you open them and you type something in. 
right? So this is basically the working directory. Within your working directory, you have this hidden Git folder. And if you open this up, you know, it's, it's a lot of stuff in here. Um, and this is where all of those changes that we are making, um, like the commits, for example, and all of that stuff, that is where um, they live. Um, so that will become more obvious when we start working with branches. But for example, when I made a change on GitHub um, and I didn't yet have it over here, uh, I was able to download it and kind of like know that there is a difference. But when I opened up my uh, files, that change was not yet there. It was over here. Uh, this folder knew that change had been made. Those files had been downloaded over here, but it hadn't yet affected these files over there. So that only happened when I then pulled um, again from origin, or I just merged those changes that had been made over here over to these files. It's it's nuanced. Um, it, it like it's a, it's kind of like nitpicky to know that this is how this works but i've i've found it helpful to to understand that this is what git does that basically it's just like a hidden folder in your computer and if i were to delete this by the way um if i just take this and put it in my trash which i will not uh if i did that that entire like all of these things from here, like they would no longer be recognized by my computer. So if I just delete this, then I no longer have the version control history um, for this repository. Is there anything else? Well, um, I say we still take a five minute break uh, and we will come back at 3.25 and then I will tell you about branches. Uh, yes, Mozda, um, I can share my screen quickly and I will show how that works. Uh, and you're probably seeing, ooh. Uh, <laughs> Try not to show you my email, sorry. Uh, show in Finder. So yeah, if you just uh, open your Git Ignore, you can just type um, a file here. So if say, I also don't want to be tracking this like dot git attributes. I don't actually know what that file does. Um, <laughs> so I hope that's okay. But if uh, I don't want to be following, to be tracking this anymore, I, I just type it here, save it. Um, and that is basically it. So, yeah. All right. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, and yeah, you can also add uh, entire folders. You just write the name of the folder and um, whatever this thing is called, some kind of dash. Forward, forward dash. <laughs> One of the dashes. All right. Um, I'm going to share my screen and we can go back uh, to stuff. Uh, I can share my desktop. Cool. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yes. So, as promised, um, the second uh, part of today's workshop will be about working with branches. And you've heard the name branch a lot, so hopefully this will help understand what the what these things actually are. So up until now, um, the workflow that we've been following has been really quite linear, like uh, what Rachel showed you uh, last week. So you know maybe you start with a file, and you delete some things, you modify some things, and so on and so forth. But you're working like kind of like linearly within this. And you can go back and forward in time as well. Um, what we've added today is, you know, still a fairly linear workflow. It's just like adding um, this remote uh, when working with GitHub. So maybe you create a file on your computer 
and you make some more changes while you're still still working locally. Um, and then you decide that you know your work is ready to be shared with the world. So you push it to GitHub. Um, you make some more changes while you're still on GitHub. Um, and then you uh, pull your changes down to your local machine um, and you continue working there. Um, so what we'll talk about now is branching. So the idea here is that you have your main branch. Um, and again, this is like the default name for a branch, which is your main line of development for your work. Um, so basically, say you're working on like some data analysis, and you want to be able to always, um, you know, analyze the data that you have, you want to be able to create some results, um, you want to be able to give, you know, stuff to your supervisor or your PI or whatever. Um, but at the same time, you maybe, you know, learned of a new analysis technique and you want to play around with it, you want to try it out. You don't really want to change your file completely to have that because it may not work, you don't know. So you want kind of like a parallel line of development, an independent one where you can go and mess around with stuff and see what works and see what doesn't. Um, and that is what a branch is. It is an independent line of development where you can experiment with your work. Um, and, you know, if it works out, then maybe you can um, uh, merge it back into the main uh, branch. And then, you know, you have that in your main line of development or, you know, it doesn't go anywhere and it just stays on a branch forever until you delete the branch. Um, so branches help you retain a working version of your code while also allowing you to experiment and try out new things without breaking anything. So that is um, the difference between always working on one branch or having various branches. Um, so I'll show you along, uh, I'll show you how to work around with branches. I'll be experimenting a bit with the, um, with the sandwich recipes file, because you can experiment with recipes and it makes sense. Um, but obviously it's a bit of a stretched example for a research project. Normally, you know, what you could experiment with in those cases would be probably some kind of code um, that you're, you know, maybe trying to add a new feature to or try out a different analysis. Um, try a different like cleaning method for your data. Um, I did sometimes use branches for um, writing as well. Like I did write my thesis um, like in Latif. Um, so, you know, say that you have this great paper and it's 8,000 words, um, but you want to submit it to, you know, a fancy journal that will only take 3,000 words, you can, take that into a branch and play around with it and see if it is even possible to cut it down to, you know, like almost a third of its size. And if yes, great. If not, fine. It didn't work, right? It didn't mess up um, all of that other work that you did making a nicely written coherent paper. So right now we'll be playing around with recipes, but um, please keep in mind that there are more sensible um, things to do with this. Uh, and this is still my git ignore stuff. So please don't worry about what I just did there. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to create a branch uh, on GitHub desktop. So I've opened up my GitHub desktop and we'll finally play around with this tub tab that says uh, what the current branch is. We're currently on main. So um, I can the Zoom menu is always in the way. It's amazing. OK, um, so I want to create a new branch. And I'm going to call my new branch um, recipe experiment, right? Because I'm going to use it to experiment with my recipes. So I'm going to create the branch. And as you can see here, um, it has now changed, like there are two branches now, there's main and the recipe experiment. And from the tick mark, we know that we are currently on the recipe experiment branch. 
And it also says so here. So as always, GitHub Desktop wants us to publish everything on GitHub. Um, this time we're going to say no to GitHub Desktop. We will just keep this local um, to see how things work. Um, so let's say that I want to, so I have my sandwich recipes. One day I will learn. So I have my sandwich recipes um, and I want to experiment with this recipe because I actually really don't like lettuce. I'm just not big on salad. So I want to change this, um, this recipe from being a bacon, lettuce, tomato um, recipe to being a bacon and tomato recipe. No lettuce, please. So I've changed the title. Um, I am also where is the lettuce? <laughs> well, this is not the problem that I anticipated having. Um, there should be some lettuce in the materials. Um, Okay, well, it's possible that I saved this recipe after I had practiced doing this to remove the lettuce. So um, this is a very easy change. I'm just going to change it from a BLT to a BT because the lettuce is no longer there. Um, but that is fine. Uh, imagine that I did take away some lettuce from this recipe. I have saved this change. Um, okay. So this change has been made in this branch. Um, normally, what I would pretend to do at this point is I go away and I try this new recipe that I have created, um, and I try it. And if I like the new recipe that I have made without the lettuce, then I will say, yes, this is the correct recipe now. So I am happy to merge it into main because it is an experiment that has worked. Um, so if I wanted to merge this branch and I realize this is extremely silly because I've literally only taken away a letter. Um, but anyway, let's go with it. If I wanted to merge it into main, I would do that by first. And this is a little bit annoying on GitHub desktop. First, you need to click on main to move to main. Oh, sorry. Um, we'll talk about that later. I have not committed my change. Uh, remove lettuce from BLT. So I've committed my change. And now if I want to um, merge this uh, commit from my branch into um, the default branch, now I have to change into main. And now we can see that I am in fact on main. And now, I go and click on this button over here that says choose a branch to merge into main. It opens up a window. And if I click on recipe experiment, it now tells me that um, I can merge those things together and I can create a merge commit. So, I'm just gonna close that and show it again in case uh, you missed something. So first you have to click on main so that the tick is on main here. Um, and once you've done that, then the button should say, choose a branch to merge into main. The reason you have to move into main is because if you're not onto main, um, this button will you know, get you to try to merge changes onto the wrong branch. So first you change into main, click on the button to choose a branch, select the branch where you made your change, in this case, the recipe experiment and create a merge commit. Okay, so um, that change has been made. Uh, it still lives only locally on my computer um, and I can push it to GitHub. And if I go and look at GitHub, then um, I can see that I have indeed removed the lettuce from BLT. So that's great. Um, 
you'll see that this still only knows of only one branch, right? It can only see the default branch, the main one, because I have not um, I have not published this branch onto um, GitHub. So if I do that now and say publish branch, then you can see that, and I have to refresh, then you can see that over here, there are indeed two branches. GitHub now knows that there is main and there is the recipe experiment. Okay, so what I would like you to do now, just to get a little bit of a feel for this, um, is to follow the same steps as I took before, um, move to the recipe uh, experiment branch, uh, turn the BLT or the BT uh, sandwich uh, vegetarian. So, you know, you can use vegan bacon or you can use beetroots or whatever. Don't spend too much time trying to figure out how to turn vegetarian um, and commit your changes to the recipe experiment branch. Merge that branch to main and push the changes to GitHub. Um, GitHub wants you to do this thing. Do not click on this. We will. I will show you how to do that um, in a moment. For the time being, just do what um, I've shown you how to do. Um, and you have five minutes um, to do that. Um, once you are done, please do give us like a, a thumbs up or that yes emoji. Um, and if you're done before the five minutes um, are done, then we will move on. I will now stop talking. Should we pause the recording or would we, do we still want to keep it? Eh, I say keep it. Sounds good. Just a second. <laughs>
Awesome. I see that a couple of people have finished. Uh, if you see this message saying uh, that, yeah, your main branch isn't protected, don't worry. Uh, it's to do with, yeah, permissions, as Rachel says. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, okay, so that is five minutes. Um, if there is anyone that uh, does need more time, um, do let us know. I should actually say it the other way around. If you're done uh, and you've not already said that you're done, can you like put a thumbs up in the chat or something? There's not very many of us, so if some people are struggling uh, to finish this, then we can definitely help you um, before we move. Um, okay, people are very quiet. Are you still alive? Are you still there? <laughs> I hope you are. Um, I, oh, no, 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 please don't do that. Okay, cool. I will just uh, move on to the next thing I wanted to show you with um, branches um, and um, we'll see how that goes. Um, so, oh, okay, you saw all thumbs, okay. I was looking at the wrong place. I think I had the chat open, great, excellent. Um, so we will now do um, what GitHub wants us to do uh, and interact with, what GitHub Desktop wants us to do and interact with GitHub Desktop more. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another change to the, oh my, oh, what is wrong with me? <laughs> oh, the force of habit. Um, okay. So I am going to add another recipe. Um, so I have cheated and put another recipe in the HackMD. So what I will do is I will take this. This is the sandwich that I pretended to eat uh, when we were asked uh, to add, oop, no, to add a um, sandwich uh, in the data file. So I'm just going to copy and paste it here. So it is a croque madame. I am actually mostly a vegetarian. Uh, ignore, you know, what I have been uh, pretending to be eating um, in this uh, toy experiment. Um, okay, so I have now made a change. Um, and we can see that my um, GitHub desktop uh, sees that I have made a change. Uh, note that I am still on the recipe experiment branch. I should have actually um, pointed that out, that we are still on the recipe experiment branch. I'm not making changes on uh, main. Um, and I am going to commit uh, this change, add croc madam recipe. I'm going to commit it. Um, so just to reiterate a little bit on um, what I've already shown you. So when I am on um, the recipe experiment branch, if I open the sandwich recipes, fine. Um, you'll see that the croque madame is here. Um, if I change the branch to be on main, the croque madame is not there, right? So I do find that a little bit crazy that that is the case, that I opened the same file on my finder um, and it has different things in it. 
Um, so that's like what the branch does, which is pretty neat. Okay, so I have now this uh, commit on my uh, branch, and I do now want to push it to uh, GitHub. So I'm going to click on push origin. And what it's going to tell me is uh, to open a pull request. So we've already come up, uh, come across uh, this pull action or pull command, um, which means you know taking the changes that exist um, in a repository and putting them in another repository. So now what I'm asking someone is to basically perform that pull action. So I'm, yeah, there is a mechanism to just make it easy for others to. Um, pull changes from your uh, repository into their own. So I'm going to click on preview pull request um, and it opens up this wizard. Notice that um, over here it tells me um, what I'm trying to do. So it knows that this change was made in the recipe experiment branch and it does give me like a drop down menu where I can still change um which branch this will be merged into now obviously i only have one branch so um you know it has to be main but in other cases you know uh you could have multiple branches um that you could merge changes from one into the other but in this case i'm sticking with main um and it shows me the diff right all of the additions that i have made and it tells me that you know, it is able to merge, these branches can be automatically merged. Um, very happy news, sometimes that's not the case and you have to go and like resolve things, but this all looks good. So I'm just gonna create this pull request and that automatically takes me to uh, GitHub, the website, github.com. Uh, and this wizard is still quite similar. Um, so it has my commit message, over here, I can add a description if I want. Um, and it tells me, um, you know, that the changes exist over here and they're going to be merged into here. And again, I can, I can play around with these things. Um, I could, I never do because I actually do find this a bit confusing and GitHub has gotten very good at putting these things correctly. So, you do have the option of changing this, but um, I would obviously advise, I would honestly advise against it. Okay, so do I want to add uh, a comment? Um, yeah, I mean, I could, but this is a pretty fine description. Okay, um, you can tell that it's getting a bit later in the day, I'm getting a little bit less um, coherent. Okay, so what has happened now is I can see this kind of like history that I have um, created a pull request uh, and GitHub kind of like helpfully checks some things um, and tells me um, that, you know, I don't need to get anyone to review this uh, before I merge it. Uh, I've not set up continuous integration and there are no conflicts with main so that I can just go ahead and uh, merge it if I wanted. Uh, one of you asked about, you know, this warning that our main branch is not protected. If I wanted to protect my main branch at this point, I could click on like add rule um, and say that, you know, someone has to like review um, the branch before uh, it can be um, before it can be merged. Um, I'm not gonna do that now, but it's honestly as simple as clicking on this button and then you, yeah, require that this is done with a pull request, not, you know, just a merge. Um, and someone needs to review this code, open it up, look at it, make sure that it is okay um, before uh, it can be merged. But I'm gonna not do that right now, actually. So I'm just gonna go back to this pull request uh, tab. Um, and if I, okay, 
so I have now clicked on files changed. So if I, I just want to show you what a review looks like. Now, it doesn't really make much sense for this example because, you know, I added this code and I am now reviewing this code, which clearly doesn't, isn't best practice, right? Like you want someone else to review your code. But the way you would do it is you would open it up and the files changed and you would um, look at it, make sure that it is okay. You would uh, click on viewed to show that you have viewed the file um, and click on this review changes button. If you click it, um, there are different options. Uh, so you can just give a comment, you can approve the change, uh, or you can request uh, the changes are made before it is possible to um, commit uh, or to merge uh, the pull request. So, you know, um, I can't approve my own pull request because, you know, someone else needs to do that. Um, so again, I'm not actually going to do that, um, but this is how it would work. We will do a lot more of these things uh, next week. So I'm back to the commit uh, for the pull request. Uh, oh, sorry, back over here of the pull request. Sorry, this got confusing. Um, I should have just done it first and then showed you all of these things, but this is all fine. And I'm just gonna click on merge pull request now and confirm merge. Okay, and the pull request has been merged uh, and it has been closed. Um, so if I go to this pull request tab, you can, normally you would see all of the ones that are open and you can also see if uh, there are any old ones that have been basically merged in and then closed. So that change has been made. If I go to, um, Sandwich recipes, I will now see the Croque Madame recipe. Um, that got a bit confusing. Uh, I hope that still made sense. I showed you some things that maybe I shouldn't have shown you. We can talk about them more next week. Um, but yeah, that kind of made us go into this tab bit. Uh, so this is the pull requests tab. Uh, you now know one more of these and what it does. Uh, and you can still go and look at this old one over here. So it is closed, but this branch still exists. Um, so we still have two branches over here. If I expect that I am going to experiment with my recipes more, then I can keep this branch open and, you know, maybe I'll use it again in the future to make, um, to make other changes. Um, if I don't think that's going to happen, I can just go ahead and delete the branch because the changes have been merged. There's nothing there that I'm going to lose. Um, so I can just click on this bin over here that says delete recipe experiment. And it has now been deleted. I can still restore it if I want, um, but you know, if I go back to my main kind of like page, I can see that now I only have one branch appear here. The second branch um, does not, um, is not there. Okay, so I did a few bits uh, over here on GitHub desktop. Um, uh, on GitHub, let's see what's uh, going on on GitHub desktop. Um, so we can see that here, nothing really has changed. Um, it still has this option to preview the pull request, which I've actually already done. I opened the pull request um here and then on github and i merged it and then i even deleted the branch um but this branch is still here it's the one i'm on um so this is a bit of a bug i think um basically when i tried to tell github desktop that you know um this branch 
like these changes are now done and this bran branch has been deleted um what it does is it sees that changes have been made like you know that pull request is now gone but it's like oh you have a branch called recipe experiment it does not exist on github do you want to publish it so you could get stuck in a bit of a loop here um if you don't remember or get confused or whatever so what i would do at this point is i would go to the branch uh, tab and just um, delete this branch manually um so yeah i think i think this is a bit of a bug or maybe this is just like not how you're supposed to do it um but i find it confusing and I did look on the internet and other people have found it confusing too. So I am not crazy. Um, so this is just something to keep in mind um, that sometimes, you know, maybe you run into bugs. So yeah, deleting a branch on GitHub doesn't delete the branch on GitHub desktop. But if you delete a branch on GitHub desktop, um, it asks you if you also want to delete the branch on GitHub and that does work. Um, Okay, so do keep that in mind. Uh, and now uh, I would like you to do another exercise where you um, create a new branch. Uh, you can call it my sandwich or you can call it whatever you want. Um, publish the branch on GitHub, um, edit the recipes markdown file to include a new recipe. You know, it can be your favorite sandwich, it can be the sandwich that you added last week in the file, it can be whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. Uh, don't spend too long thinking about a sandwich. Um, commit those changes, push them to origin, open a pull request, merge the pull request, and then delete the branch. Basically, exactly what we did just now, just like such that it's just to help you remember all the steps that you need to take um, and actually do them all um, for yourselves. Um, is that more or less clear? I think so. Excellent. Okay. In that case, you have uh, 10 minutes for this. Um, if you finish early, um, you can yeah, give a thumbs up or a yes or type in the chat, um, etc.
All right, we're also almost out of time. Can you actually hear the ticking down? Okay, yeah. <laughs> I uh, don't know if I need to like share the sound for stuff or whatever. Cool. Uh, so is everyone finished? Can you give us? Yes. Finished. Two. Three. Yes. Okay. Excellent. All right. Great. Um, so I did want to show you um, one thing uh, about how to kind of like visualize uh, branches. So I think if you go to the insights tab, um, I mean, this already gives you quite a lot of summary information on, you know, um, how many people uh, have been involved, how many like commits and what sort of commits, you know, is it additions, is it delet deletions, whatever. So there is actually quite a lot of information in this insights tab if you're interested. Um, but I also want to show you this um, network uh, thingy over here on the left hand left hand uh, menu. Uh, and this shows you um, kind of like the branches a bit more. So obviously this is not a very uh, exciting uh, graph because we've not had very many things with uh, branches, but this should be kind of reminis reminiscent of that, um, of this. Uh, this is kind of what I was trying to emulate. Um, so you have your main timeline, which is literally called main. Um, and you can see all of those dots along the way, uh, one for each commit. Uh, and when something diverges into a branch, this is how it appears. And you can see the commit and then when it merges into um, main. So I just wanted to show you that functionality because it is quite useful. Um, my, I use Git Kraken a lot, which is another GUI for GitHub, which has really beautiful visualizations of the branches. And I haven't been able to find something like that for GitHub Desktop, which is a little bit disappointing. But if you at least have uh, things linked up with GitHub, you can see the branches on this um, network bit of insights. Um, so that is more or less what I wanted to show you today. Since we do have a little bit more time, um, I will show you something that you should be aware of. Um, and it kind of popped up um, accidentally before. So I'm gonna create a new branch. Uh, I'm just gonna call it test. Um, so I've now moved to this uh, test branch um, and I will, um, make some sort of change um, to my repository, to my files. Let's say that it's basically, you know what, our studio, you win. Um, let's say that it's an accidental change. Um, you know, like I accidentally typed this and saved it and closed it. Um, so when I, um, when I am over here, I can see that a change has been made. Um, but I haven't committed it, right? So when you have uncommitted changes to a branch, if you try to move outside of that branch, um, GitHub Desktop is going to complain. So if I click on main, while this has not been saved, it will tell me, you have changes on this branch. What would you like to do with them? Um, so you can, you know, actually commit uh, these things to, to main. Or the thing that I want to show is that you can leave your changes on this branch. So let's say I click on this and I switch on this main branch and I do whatever it is that I want to do over here. And I come back to my, um, to my test branch. You can see that this tells me that I have stashed changes and it also shows it over here. So if you click on view stash, um, it tells me what these changes were and it gives me two options. Do you want to discard those changes 
or do you want to restore them? So if I discard these changes, they just go away and it's like it never happened, um, which is honestly what I would probably do with this because it's just like nonsense. Um, but you can restore the changes, uh, which will put it over here in my staging uh, area so that Git can kind of like see it and it can say, oh, uh, you've made some changes. Do you now want to commit them? Um, so I just wanted to point out that this is um, a functionality that exists. Um, also, because if you work on GitHub desktop, it's probably quite likely that it will happen to you. Um, it, you just need to forget to commit one thing and then it complains. So I will discard these because I don't actually uh, want them, but you could you know, restore them and decide if you want to commit them later on. Yes, I want to discard them. Okay, uh, and I will now delete this branch because I do not actually need it. All right, um, so that's kind of all I wanted to show you today. Um, and, oh, no, why did I stop sharing? Uh, apologies. Um, I wanted to go back to my slides. Um, and, yeah. Um, talk a little bit about the things that I showed you today. So I showed you how to create branches and how to create pull requests and all of those things. Um, and honestly, you wouldn't always do that. It would depend on what project you are working on. So, you know, you could be wondering how much should I be using these features if I'm only working by myself? So if you are only working by yourself, um, you can just start by working with only one branch, only with main. That is totally fine. Um, you can then use branches just to test out new ideas and things you're not sure about, things that you think may actually break your code. Um, you do not need to submit pull requests that you yourself then, you know, uh, accept and merge into main. That doesn't really make sense. You can just merge your branches directly to main like we did at the very beginning. Um, that is totally fine. If, however, you are going to work with multiple people, you should keep main protected. Um, that there are different ways in which you can protect your main. Basically, what you want is people to not be able to just make a commit on main and just, you know, do that by themselves because that commit may break things. And yes, you can revert to the previous state, that's fine. But in the meantime, you may cause problems to people that are using your code or other collaborators. So basically you want everything that gets merged into main to be reviewed by someone. And you do that by creating branches where you work on a change. And then before that change is merged in, someone reviews those changes and accepts them. Um, and yeah, I wanted to say something. Oh yes. Um, this is a point that Rachel made, and thank you so much, Rachel, which goes to show that I have not worked with people on code uh, collaboratively on GitHub as much as she has, which is that when you are working with branches on projects with other people, the branches should be to create a specific feature. So you don't create a branch to say, oh, this is my branch, you know, this is the Irini branch, and this is where I'm going to make all the changes that I'm working on. Um, because that could mean that, you know, you're on that branch for a long time and main keeps evolving and you still have like an old version of main um, that could be an issue. Uh, if, you know, multiple people try to make changes in the same bits um, of that code. So, Branches should be for specific, you know, well-defined tests, features, whatever you want to create. Um, so make branch branches frequently um, 
and make branches small. You know, it's better to have a branch for something very small than to have a branch for everything. And then, you know, if you only want some bits of it, it's very hard to only, you know, take those bits that you want, like maybe three quarters and, you know, not the other part, right? So make branches small, make them specific. Um, so yes, that is something I wanted to mention. Um, I also wanted to mention that GitHub is not the only option for working collaboratively with Git. It is the most popular, um, but, you know, there are some controversies when it comes to GitHub. Um, some of you may have heard of something called GitHub Copilot. Um, so that is it's basically like a generative AI that was trained on we don't know how much of the code that is on GitHub, but a lot of the code that was on GitHub uh, to help people write uh, code. So it will like give you suggestions depending on what you say you want to do. The problem with that is that the code that this model was trained on was not necessarily licensed for that kind of commercial use. So it seems likely um, that GitHub broke copyright when doing that. I believe that people have sued and, you know, it's going to court, it's going to be a big case. Um, so, you know, there are issues around that with GitHub. Um, so other options, the similar platforms like GitHub are uh, GitLab and Gitbucket, uh, Bitbucket. Um, I've not really used Bitbucket. I've used GitLab a little bit. Um, you will hear of GitLab a lot in university environments because they often have, you know, their own instance of it. So it would like live on the servers of like a university. Um, and universities like GitLab because it is more private. Um, so especially for people like you working with, you know, uh, sensitive personal data, um, you may have the option through um, a trusted research environment or university to work with um, GitLab for versioning your code. So I wanted to point that out too. Um, this is just like some a summary of like the terminology that I covered today. Um, so, you know, you can uh, refer to that um, if you want to remember what these things mean. Um, but yeah, a remote is a version of your project hosted on the internet, for example, on GitHub or some kind of network for the purposes of collaboration. Um, origin is the default name for a remote. Uh, it's typically the one that a project was cloned from, but it doesn't have to be. Um, and it doesn't have to be named origin. You can also change it. Um, a branch is an independent line of development. Um, Technically, it is a pointer to a specific commit. I will not get into this, but you know, if you want to know like technically what it is, that is basically that. It just points to a specific commit and its parents. Um, so like the commits that came before. Main is the default branch name for that. Uh, yeah, it, it's the first branch. Uh, you can also name that something else. In fact, um, the default name for a branch used to be master, but that has changed. Um, to move away from kind of like language with colonialist overtones. Um, merge is an action that incorporates changes from another repository or branch. Uh, and a pull request is a mechanism to inform others that you have push, pushed changes to a repository. Um, I will take questions in a moment. I did want to say that um, if you want to practice more with playing around with Git and with GitHub and branches. Um, I have linked to a couple of things here. So um, one thing that you could do is create a personal readme file on your GitHub repository. Um, it will, it, it's basically like uh, creating a mini website for yourself, but it's like super low tech. Um, and I will show you mine in a second. Um, uh, you can also, follow this link to this website called Learn Git Branching and it is an interactive kind of like game that teaches you um, a bunch of things about how to work with branches. I will point out that this is more similar to working with the command line. Um, so do keep that in mind. Um, 
And yeah, I'll just show you what that personal readme looks like. Um, just so you know. Oh, no, actually. Yeah, so if you just go to my profile, actually. Uh, oh, no, you can't see that normally. Um, uh this yes okay yes this should be more uh straightforward uh than what i just showed but basically if you just as you go to like my github profile um which you can you can't edit but i can um you will see this so it's like a landing page to you know who i am so you can add whatever information you want here, you know, what you're currently working on, uh, what you want to learn, what you want to collaborate with people on, um, you know, how people can reach you. So it is, it is kind of handy to have uh, to share information about yourself with people you might want to collaborate with. Um, so that is all, and I will just say thank you uh for your attention and i will stop sharing and i guess we can uh stop the recording as well um